right, I've had this machine about a week now and I've gotten a chance to put some hours on the thing and it works pretty much perfect. There's a few little issues though with it that I'd like to address. Let's give this thing a pressure wash and then bring it in for a quick service and try to fix some of the little issues with it that I noticed. take too long. Hang on, I got an idea. Let's change the gear oil in the final drives.
All right, let's do the other side. This side's kind of different than the other side. Must have been changed before. All right, now let's grease this thing. years ago at a yard sale and I've never had to do anything to it. It finally, I think it's out of grease. I mean, it feels pretty light. Let's see what it looks like inside. I've never had this open before. Well, huh. Maybe I just need to stir it. Or warm it up or something, it is really cold. Let me, it's got some liquid here, let me just mix this. See if it works again. That's good. It pumped. It was pumping continuously before. Now you can feel it. Like you see, this got pressure in it. Yeah, that's working. All right, every grease fitting took grease, and this thing is working properly now. All right, the last thing I want to do to this thing, none of the work lamps work on it. So it's got three of them. There, there, and one missing right there. All right, so when you go to turn on the lights, nothing happens. This should be lighting up green. All right, so the first step, whenever something has an electrical problem, find the fuses. And luckily, that's labeled. Here are the fuses right here. So this cover can come off and that was nice of them to actually label what each fuse is. So here's one right there, it says work lamp. Let's pull that out, we got a 20 amp blade fuse. And if we look at our fuse, it's very easy to see that it's burnt out in the center there. This is a blown fuse. So if we were working on something that didn't have all the fuses labeled, these fuses can be checked while they're still installed in the machine. So you see these two metal spots right here what you do is you take a test light all right so we got our test light grounded with the ignition on and we can go and test each side of each fuse and go through each one until you find one where it doesn't have power on one of the sides and you know that's a blown fuse 
All right, let's try it now with the new fuse. All right, look, it works. Oh, it went out. All right, so we got another blown fuse. All right, so since that blew so quickly, that means we have a short to ground. So when you have something that's blowing fuses as fast as you're putting them in it, I know it's tempting to put higher amperage fuses in there. Since it's shorting out so quick, I'm pretty sure a 25 amp fuse would still blow. And if you put a 30 amp fuse in there, the fuse wouldn't blow, but the wire would probably melt and burn somewhere. So definitely don't want to do that. You want to find the problem and fix it the right way. So a really good way to look for blown fuses, instead of going through a million fuses, what you do is take like an, a fog light and I put some blade terminal connectors on it, just like the fuse has. And I'll plug this in where the fuse went. All right, so now with that fog light in there, when I turn on the headlights, the light lights up. Now, the goal is to make that light go out. So what you want to do is you want to start looking for a wire that's shorted to ground. So if it's a used machine that you bought from someone else, look for a spot where someone was messing with the wires. If you see electrical tape or just messed with wires in general, this machine is pretty nice. I think I'm going to start looking at all these lights are kind of smashed. You know, the wiring is messed up there. That one's completely missing. So let's go to that one that's missing first. All right, well, there's nothing here, and I don't think these are shorted to ground. All right, let's check this one. These wires look a little messed up. All right, let's unplug this thing. It just... Oh, look at that. A light went out. Awesome. I think that was it. All right, great. Let's put a regular fuse in there and see if it works. All right, so here's a new 20 amp fuse. Turn the lights on. It's lighting up. And that's on. All right, that's fixed. That was cool. That was very easy. But you see, that's how you find a shorted out wire. Use a fog light like that in place of your fuse because you can go messing with all the wires on the thing and find the one that's shorting to ground. Now, if you're working on an old piece of junk and the wiring harness is completely chewed up in it, sometimes you're better off just running brand new wires because that, that would be a much faster repair. Just do a good job routing them. Try to route them the way the factory routed them. Make it look neat. All right, so let's, uh, let's take this apart and see what actually happened to it. I'm not gonna reuse this. I just wanna see why it's shorted out. All right, let's have some fun with this thing. All right, so this charger is capable of making 50 amps. All right, there's a short right there. So you can see this is pegging out and we're getting smoke right there. There's our smoke and fire. All right, the short was in there, it was not here. What's the fire? Right there, there's our short. Oh, I see what was happening. Okay. This wire right here was touching this thing. Oh, look at that right in here too. Give it more amps. All right, now you see how that caught on fire when it had a direct short? That's the purpose of that fuse, is to protect that from happening. If there was no fuse there, what would happen is wherever the thinnest part of wire is would, would heat up and catch on fire. So, and that's the same reason you wouldn't want to put a 30 amp fuse in there too, because, well, that was still, that was like a direct short and you could tell by that amp gauge, we were up over 50 amps to make that short happen. But that's the, that's the point of a fuse. All right, so I got some new LED lights to replace those old lights. And these are nice, the metal housings, these almost never get smashed. 
All right, that's the only way to connect wires and have it actually stay working. and give it a try. All right, this tree blew down in the last windstorm. So let's see if we can get it out of there. It kind of fell between these other two trees, kind of weird though. Right, that's one nice thing about doing tree work in the winter time the logs stay nice and clean dragging them around in the snow instead of mud my friend's building a house right now and he's milling all his own lumber so I'll get those logs to him instead of those logs going bad in the woods so that's good I'm glad I was able to do that little service to this thing 
now that I probably have five hours operating this machine in my own yard, I'm plenty confident bringing this out on jobs. You know, the thing seems to work pretty much perfect, especially since it's got close to 10,000 hours. The thing is very smooth and tight still. All right, so the next video, I'm almost done fixing up this machine. So I did the cosmetics, I made it a quick change. I got new tracks coming forward, I got a new seat. So this is gonna be a nice excavator too, as soon as that one's done.